it's revival time. Sometimes we ask God, why do you have to use us for an example? Use somebody else. But he does it so that somebody will know that he's still God. And besides him, there is no other. Before you shut down on it, just give me an opportunity to speak into your spirit. Um, Father, we thank you now for these, your people. We thank you, God, for these people who have come because they've been invited. Some came out of obligation. Came, some came to see. Some came because they did not want to hear anybody's mouth for whatever the reason they're here tonight, oh God. I pray by the authority of Jesus Christ that you sit John down and that you would speak tonight. Father, encourage these, your people. Father, I'm surrounded by a lot of leaders. And so, Father, I pray, God, that you would encourage every one of them. No tongue-tiedness and, God, no nervousness. God, I pray, God, that your word comes from forth with precision and power. Father, we bind up discouragement even tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, we thank you that we're not tired and we're not weary. You told us for the spirit of heaviness, you'll give us a garment of praise. Anoint me this your, this, this your servant. And God, anoint these lips of clay. And we'll give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We all can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Please forgive me for not knowing titles and accolades and everybody, but I thank God for Lottie Dottie and everybody. Amen. 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 And I do thank God for Pastor Beckett, as she said. I've known her. I call her Apostle Beckett. Um, as I as I, I've known Pastor Beckett my entire life. I grew up in Savannah, Georgia at the Pentecostal America Deliverance Center. And uh, Pastor Beckett has always been the radical preacher. Amen. Yeah. And I deem it an honor, amen, to come preach for her tonight. Amen. Yeah. Come on, somebody give God praise for that. Yeah. Not long-winded, um, but I do have something to say. Can you play softly for me? Go to Exodus um, 12 and 31. Exodus 12 and 31. Exodus 12 and 31. I got something to say tonight. Amen. The enemy is always busy. Amen. But God is good. And I don't do a lot of cliches. I, I try to preach naked word. And I try to give it real and wrong. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to be myself tonight. Is that all right? Amen. I don't know how to be nobody else. Nobody. Amen. Exodus 12 and verse number 31. It says, During the night, the king summoned, or Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Oh, I'm, leaving from, I'm reading from the NIV version. Leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go worship the Lord as you have requested. Now hear this. It says, during the night, Pharaoh um, said to his half-brother, Moses and Aaron, uh, leave my people, you and the Israelites, go worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and your herds as you have said and go. Somebody said go. Go. And bless me. And the Egyptians urged the people to hurry and leave their country, for otherwise they said, if you do not leave, we will die. So the people took their dough before the yeast was added and carried it on their shoulders, um, needing trots wrapped in clothing. And the Israelites did as Moses had instructed and asked the Egyptians. And the Israelites did as Moses instructed and asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and for gold and for clothing. And the Lord had made the Egyptians favorably um, disposed towards the Israelites, and they gave them what they had asked. And they plundered um, the Egyptians. Verse number 37. So the Israelites journeyed from Ramesses to Sokoth. They were about 600,000 men on foot besides men, women, and children. Um, if you do me a favor, if you will, tell your neighbor, say, I'm not coming out of this. I'm not coming out of this. Empty handed. Empty handed. Tell somebody else, say, I'm not coming out of this. I'm not coming out of this. Empty handed. Empty handed. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, it's Friday night, it's revival, and I'm a lot um, crunker than what my, my my bodily disposition is given. I'm just working my way in my groove. But tell your neighbor, say, I'm not coming out of this. I'm not coming out of this. Empty handed. Empty handed. The Bible tells us in the book of, thank you, the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis, the Bible tells us around Genesis 46 and 27, that the word of the Lord comes to Abram, and he says to Abram, he says that, um, yes, you don't have a son yet. And yes, you don't have children yet. He says, but I am going to make you the father of many nations. Yes. He says um, he says that many of your children are going to go down into Egypt. He says 70 strong of them are going to go down to Egypt. And when they get down to Egypt, um, he says when they get
get down to Egypt, he says, they're going to be to do to nothing more than slaves, but I give my word that I'm going to deliver them. Now, everybody else says word. 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 He says, Abram, um, before you become Abraham and before you are the father of many nations, when we pray, we say that the father of Abraham, Isaac, yes. and to Jacob. Yes. He says, uh, before you become the martyr of the faith and because, before you become the example of the faith, uh, I got to take you through tribulation. And, yes. and many of us like the fact uh, that we come through triumph, but many of us don't like tribulation. Yes. Huh. Bible says now y'all gonna wake up. Um, the Bible says Friday night it's time to party. Um, the Bible says that now they go down into Egypt and 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 they're deduced to nothing more than slaves. And the Bible says uh, um, that there is between four hundred and four hundred and thirty four years uh, that they are in bondage. They are um are, 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 are afflicted. They are smitten. They are caused to make brick out of straw. And and somebody was believing God to deliver them in that time. But uh, they had a set time to go through. Yes. And, and many of us in church are now searching after some prophet, some apostle, some bishop, some ambassador. Y'all making up titles in these days, some and some presbyter or whatever to deliver us. But there is a time, according to Ecclesiastics, a, a time to suffer, huh? and then there is a time to triumph. Tell your neighbor, I may be in my season of suffering, I'm in my season of suffering. but I'm entering over. To my season of triumph. The Bible says that now they are enslaved, and we know about the big production. What your boy Moses, who sees a burning bush, and, and he kills an Egyptian man. And the Bible says he goes to Jethro's house, and Jethro gets Egypt out of him. Forty years uh, he was in Egypt, and another forty years it took um, God to get Egypt out of him. And some of us uh, have a problem with our holding place, but our holding place uh, is making and developing character. Tell somebody say, my holding place is developing character. Character. The Bible says now that Moses now goes to this whole production. And the Bible says, I want you to go down and I want you to go tell your half-brother Ramesses that I said, let my people go. For they have been afflicted for a long time. They, they have suffered for a long time. And they, they have gone through trials and tribulations and famine and distress uh, for a long time. And so I want you to go down uh, to Egypt and I want you to tell your half-brother to let them go. But I want to talk about before, the, before we get get there, I want to talk about the word over your life. Yes. Yeah. Um, the word over your life um, is not something that you ask for. Now, there's many leaders um, in this room tonight, and, 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 and some people went, and some people were sent, but but I, but I believe I'm surrounded by people who got a word to do what God has called yeah. them to do. Now, yeah. um, they, I, I'm not doing this because of money, because uh, the truth of the matter is there is no money in it. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah. they're still filling me out. It's okay. Um, 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 the truth of the matter is, I'm not doing this for notoriety because I really don't like a lot of attention. I'm not doing this so my name can be on a billboard. Uh, I'm doing this because there is a word over my life. I was sitting somewhere and I was minding my business, uh, and he says, John, I have need of you. And, and the truth of the matter is, uh, it wasn't my first choice. Um, 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 I don't have self-esteem issues. I don't have low self-esteem. I'm a handsome boy. Um, before I got married, I was turning heads. I can't hear nobody. And now all I do is turn one. I can't hear nobody. And so this is not connected to a self-esteem issue. I, I'm doing what I'm doing because I got a word. Bible says now, y'all gonna wake up in a minute. I'm gonna get y'all to dance and, and worship in just a minute. Bible says now um, that, 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 that there is this word over Abraham's life. And the Bible says uh, that we are going to go down to Egypt and we're going to be governors and we're going to be prince and we're going to be uh, a priest and we're going to be all this stuff. Uh, but we're going to give our, um, be, be deduced to nothing more than slaves. Uh, but God says, I give my word, I'm going to deliver. Yeah. Bible says in the book of um, Exodus, it is so prolific in that text, and I'm going to holler at you. The Bible says something so prolific in that text, the apostle that I don't know. The Bible says something in pro <laughs> prolific in that text. It says, and God remembered. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> um, um, now, 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 this is so philosophical and this is so revelatory because now um, there's, a, there's a conversation on the floor. For him to remember is to insinuate that he forgot. To him, for him to uh, remember is to insinuate that he did not um, um, have the promise at the front of his mind. Uh, but whatever you need tonight, uh, in the middle of their affliction, yeah. God remembered. Yeah. Uh, in the middle of you trying to do what he called you to do, huh, God remembered. Yeah. In the middle of trying to keep the doors open, huh, when you're not getting the support you want, huh, and God remember. In the middle of you raising your kids and they decide to do something else and, and leave you to do ministry by yourself, huh, and God remember. Bible says now, um, somebody do it just what I said at my church. Somebody said, preach, boy. Preach, boy. Oh, that's so bad. It's come to the Pentecostal church. And somebody said, preach, boy. Okay, y'all going to work on it. Um, so in, the, in the middle of turmoil, um, um, God did not let them die. See, the problem here is many of us think that we're going to die in this uh, rather than God's going to remember his promises. Now, let me give you a little Bible. The Bible says um, um, God is not a man that he shall lie, neither is he the son of man that he shall repent. If he says a thing, uh, um, he's good at his word. And, and the reason why I still show up every Every Sunday, Pastor Beckett, huh, it's because I got a word. Huh? Uh, the reason why I ain't quit the job and slap somebody before I walk out the door huh, it's because I got a word. Huh? The reason why I ain't sold an organ and auctioned off the drum huh, piece by piece is because I got a word. Huh? And some of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy, huh? but I know that you are holding on because you got a word. Huh? Your marriage ain't hunky-dory all the time. Huh? The truth of the matter is they breathe and get on your nerves. Huh? But the reason Reason why you ain't got a divorce yet huh, is because you got a word. Huh? And you got to realize in the middle of your test, huh, I'm standing because I got a word. Huh? Tell your neighbor, say, I got a word huh, and I will not buffer from it. Huh? I got a word huh, and I will not alter from it. Huh? I got a word huh, and I'm standing on it. Huh? Somebody say, yeah. There's a question on the floor um, for the baptized believer who acts like nothing bothers them. Um, there's a question on the floor for the believer that acts like they, they wrapped up, tangled up, and tied up in Christ. Um, and that emotionally, that they don't never look at what's going on. Now, I'm just going to be human for 35 seconds. I can't hit nobody. Huh? If you got a church, right? And you got social media. And you look at your audience on Sunday. And you look at somebody else's audience. You ain't going to tell me that stuff don't get to you sometimes. And so here you are. The Bible said if you be faithful over a few, he'll make you the rule of many. But in your heart of hearts, you're like, God, when is it going to be my turn? God. When are you going to honor, honor your word? And the truth of the matter is when the prophet comes alive in the services, uh, we try to duck out and go out the door because I don't want no more prophecy. Oh, 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 oh. I, I don't want no more prophecies. Um, I, I thank you. I don't want nobody else to tell me what God is going to do. Uh, I'm in a season where I want God to do it. Huh? I want you to remember what you said a long time ago. Huh? The truth of the matter is a Apostle Beckett, huh? many of us are waiting for words to come to pass. Huh? Oh my God, that we got years ago. Huh? I'm not even able to even look in the journal for the new stuff. Huh? If God can do some of what he said six years ago, huh? I'll be all right. Huh? Somebody say, yes, Lord. <laughs> the truth of the matter is why they're down in Egypt. Y'all want to play hard to get? I got you. Huh? The truth of the matter is why they are down in Egypt. Huh? I'm sure that somebody is emotional. Huh? I know y'all ain't going to tell the truth because y'all got the Holy Ghost huh? and y'all speak in tongues as the Spirit give utterance. Huh? But the truth of the matter is I've never been this emotional in my life. I don't care if it's about myself or with somebody else. I've never been this emotional in my life. Y'all still playing hard to get. Somebody asks you what's wrong. You can't even put it into word what's wrong. But you know something is off. Bible says now that 
the children of Israel are in a situation that they did not ask for. Now, I'm just going to throw this out this for somebody that will get excited about it. Uh, the Bible says in another part of Exodus, the Bible says uh, that one ruler of the children of Israel said, we got to do something about these people. Huh? He said, because the more we afflict them, huh, the more they multiply. Huh? And you got to understand that you've been under affliction, huh? but you've been growing under affliction. Huh? See, you got to change your perspective huh, based on what you've been going through. Huh? There was a time where y'all were getting an argument and it'll last all day. Huh? But now by four o'clock, y'all asked each other what you want to eat. Huh? You've been growing under affliction. <laughs> Bible says we got to do something about these people huh? because the more that we afflict them, huh? the more that they grow. Huh? You got to understand in this season, huh? you've been going through hell, but you've been growing. Uh, growing huh? You got to understand in this season, huh? you, you, you refuse to cry. Huh? Oh, I don't want to offend nobody, huh? but you put your big girl panties on huh? and you are determined to go on through. Huh? I refuse to die here. Huh? I don't been the worst huh? and I'm taking a look at it keep on ticking. Huh? Because huh? even though I'm being afflicted, I'm growing. Uh, 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 tell me a little testimony I'm going to get back on my paper um, The first time I've been in Atlanta For about 20 years And, and, and Jeremy, there ain't nobody going to tell the truth But there were days where I didn't know where my next meal was coming from I can't hear nobody And so um, I had nothing in the refrigerator but ice cube Yeah <laughs> Oh, okay. I had nothing in the refrigerator but ice cubes. And and I kept opening the refrigerator like God was going to magically make something appear. And, 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 and instead of me opening my mouth in the middle of my affliction, I went and got in the bed and somebody offered me to, to, to get me something to eat. But I was too powerful in the moment to see that it was a blessing. And so I prolonged my affliction because I didn't know when my deliverance came. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Now, uh, I was, I was, met a God, I was looking at the ice in the refrigerator, I can't hear nobody, and I didn't have no money, and let me tell you something else, I'm going to throw this out here, I, the Holy Ghost is intelligent, it can give you three revelations at the, at the same time. Um, the one thing I understood at an early age, uh, that some of the things that I was going through, nobody else around me was going Come through, on. and I was going through them especially because there was something that God anointed me to do. Yeah. And you got to stop looking at everybody who's going through what you're going through and wonder why they're not going through what, they, what you are going through because you are anointed for something else. Yeah. 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 Back to the ice. The next time, um, Apostle, that there was a no, there was nothing for me to eat. Um, I handled it a little different. I got my cell phone and I started strolling through my cell phone charity to find out who was going to feed me. <laughs> Because the first time I went through this, life was over. But the second time I went through it, I, I found out that God was able. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of us are in the middle of a test. And we have not turned the light on that this affliction is not for death, it's for growth. Y'all yeah. 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 ready now? Say, preach, boy. Preach, boy. Yeah, we get now. <laughs> Bible says, he raises it up. A deliverer, I better holler. Um, the Bible says he raises up a deliverer, and when he raises up a deliverer, he goes down um, to to Egypt, and he tells his half brother um, that 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 God said, "Deliver me." Now there is some there is something that I want you to see in this text. Uh, um, um, some of us are a little uh, perturbed that we have not been able to reach our families yet, uh, but sometimes our families is the last one to get it. Mm. Uh, because oh, I'm preaching, I know why. Uh, oh my God, the the, the boy, uh, he went down to. Egypt and you got to understand Ramesses knew his mess yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ramesses was his half brother so the lies that they told mama they told them together I don't gotta go for that, that he was fetched from the river because you know they were raised together and so he goes down there and he says God huh, says tell you to let my people go huh? and Ramesses asks what's God not only does Ramesses ask, watch God, huh? Ramesses said, nigga, what you done got yourself into? <laughs> in me, boy, in me, I know you smoke weed behind the locker. In me, boy, I know you. And so Moses is down there, not sure about what he's supposed to do, but he knew somebody called him to do it. Yeah. And I'm in a place in my life, if you don't hear nothing that I say today, I, I may don't have a map, but I'm not lost. <laughs> Mm. 
Moses did not know where he was going. Moses didn't know what he was called to do, but he knew he was called to do something. And Pastor Beckett, why I keep showing up is I know that I'm supposed to be doing something, and I'm figuring it out on the way. It's revival, right? God gave me leaders, got you. Bible says that this boy is talking to his half brother, <clears throat> telling his half brother that God, that I am God, said, Let my people go. Mm. Ramesses is not convinced, and so Moses got into this production and he threw his staff on the ground. And, and Ramesses is like, is, is this a joke or what word is this? And, oh. and he calls for his musicians and they throw their staff on the ground and it does the same thing. And, and day by day, the Bible says that whatever Moses was able to do, uh, um, um, Ramesses or Pharaoh was able to do. Huh? And the problem is you would have thought God huh, would put you at an advantage, huh? but you're out here and you feel like you're at a disadvantage. Oh, Yep, don't you leave me out here by myself. <laughs> God, I'm doing what you told me to do, and it don't look like what you said it was. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I came for you anyway. And the truth of the matter is, the people that could help me won't. Don't you understand that there's more people watching than celebrating? There's a difference than people watching you and pushing you. And I found out that I had to enter into a season of doing it by myself without them before they got on board. Yeah. I had to keep having Bible study and know that they was watching my live and wouldn't show up and keep preaching and then they finally came along. That is his production. Somebody say, you preaching, boy. You preaching, boy. I'm trying, and I ain't even hollering yet. <laughs> that is his production. Yeah. And you thought that God would have set up the score, apostle, but God put this boy at a disadvantage, and he is out there at his word. And everything that Ramesses, Moses does, Ramesses does. Yeah. And Moses had to get acclimated with God because Moses did not grow up well around his people. So he knew Ishtu. Y'all don't know nothing about that. He knew Osiris. He knew the Egyptian trilogy. He knew their times of synagogue and all this other foolishness. And so now I'm trusting somebody that I cannot see. How do I walk after somebody that I can't see, touch, but I can only hear? Bible says that so much went on, frogs and all this other stuff. Yeah. Bible says Pharaoh calls him in the night and he says, I want you to come get your people. He said, uh, it's just like when they when the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant. It's just like, if y'all read your Bible, it's some good stuff on there. Baby, put scandal down and get that Bible. It will bless you. Um, and if you don't understand, get YouTube and somebody to put some stories together and you will be fascinated. Because the Bible says that the Philistines stole the Ark of the Covenant. And the Bible says, and they set it by Dagon. And, and, and the next day, Dagon was on his face. And somebody got up with their smart self uh, and tried to put Dagon back together. And God destroyed the thing. And, and so the Bible said that they stole the Ark of the Covenant. And, and the scripture said because so much was going on in the, in the camp of the Philistines, uh, they called the Israelites and they said, come get God. He's he tearing up stuff. <laughs> come get him now. <laughs> Send some of your priests, your reverends, your apostles, your bishops, your Levites, and come get God. And you got to understand that when God is in the right place, ah, come, on, come, on. come get God. Yeah. So, Bible says that Ramesses said, these folk right here, they costed me too much. They got to go. Yeah. Now, every year around Easter, Passover, Resurrection, whatever you want to call it, we see this story where the children of Israel, they come out of Israel, or they come out of Egypt, beat down and, and broke up and all that stuff. But that's not the word of the Lord. The Bible says that they came out of Egypt and they were strengthened. Come on. Yeah. During the night, 
Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and says, Up, leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go worship the Lord as you requested. Take your flocks and your herd, as you have said, and go and leave a blessing for me. Further down in the text, the Bible says that they came out, none lame among them. Oh, the Bible says not, oh, y'all ain't y'all don't like good preaching. Yeah. The Bible says not only did they not come out lame among them, uh, the Bible says uh, that Moses said, try your enemies uh, and tell your enemies I want some stuff. All right. All right. All right. The Bible said that the Egyptians who did not worship Yahweh the Egyptians who did not worship El, El, El Elion, uh -huh. the Egyptians who did not worship El Shaddai, yeah. the Egyptians who did not worship Jehovah Jireh said, I'm going to give you silver, gold, sheep, cattle, silk, whatever you want, just go. Amen. So we see this time of affliction. But we also see that the fact that they didn't go down to Egypt and, and be afflicted the whole time. Uh, when they came out of their affliction, they came out with something. Yeah. 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 Um, let me tie it all Thank together. You. Let me tie it all together Thank and I'm done. I'm, I'm out here at the word of the Lord. I'm oh, out here yeah. because God has caused me to do something that is bigger than myself. Um, yeah. I didn't have the esteem and I did not have the go get them and the wherewithal um, to do this. But I'm yeah. out here at the word of the Lord. Yeah. Huh? And it seems like that God has threw me out there huh, for everybody to see my demise. Huh? Yeah. But what I love about God is God will put your life in an open playing field huh, and make you look like you're losing. Huh? So when you're winning, everybody sees. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know it seems like the church down the street got there before you. I know it seems like you have Bible study and nobody is showing up. It seems like you've never been this emotional in your life. And the only thing you're trying to do is execute the plan of God. I'm not doing this for any other reason. Because the Bible declares if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto myself. There's a question on the floor. What do you do when you do everything that God told you to do? Huh? And you do not vary away from the instructions. Huh? And you still don't get the results that you thought you would get. Huh? Now somebody, now somebody. Huh? It's saying that's not the Bible. Huh? Well, let me take you to the Bible, to the book of Genesis. Huh? The Bible said that there was a boy by the name of Noah. Huh? And the Bible said he told Noah, I want you to build an ark. Huh? And I want you to do it with urgency. Huh? And the Bible declares huh, that Noah got his whole family out there. Huh? And he did what God told him to do. Huh? But God waited a hundred years huh, to send the rain. Huh? But I got a question. Huh? What do you do when you do what God said? Huh? And God don't eat, uh, keep his end of the bargain. Huh? What do you do when you walk to everybody? Huh? And you tell them it's going to rain. Huh? And they go outside and it's 91 degrees. Huh? What do you do when you're trying to do what God said? Huh? And it don't look like what God said it would look like. Huh? Your family is laughing at you. Huh? Everybody on social media. Huh? They got messenger. Huh? They done took a picture of your life. Huh? Child, ain't nobody in that audience. Huh? But that's all right. Huh? I refuse to come down. Huh? My name is Nehemiah. Huh? And I'm doing a great work. Huh? And I will not come down. Huh? Because I got a word over my head. Huh? That heaven and earth will pass away. Huh? But his word is going to last forever. Huh? And what I love about God. Huh? See, some of y'all don't believe this. Huh? But God is fair. Huh? The Bible tells tells us in the book of Job. Ha, Job ain't do nothing. Ha, the Bible said that Satan ha, with his messy self ha, came before God ha, and said Job is only serving you ha, for the fishes and the loaves. I guarantee you ha, if you take away her health, ha, take away her ministry, ha, take away what she got, ha, she's going to curse you. Ha. But Job said it like this. Ha, Man! Ha, that is born of a woman ha, is of a few days ha, and his days to fuel of trouble ha. Job said it just like this ha. he said I'm going to wait ha, till my change come ha. Job said naked I came ha, and naked I will return ha. but blessed be the name of the Lord ha. I made up in my mind ha, that I'm not in this for the fishes and the loaves ha. I'm not in this ha, so somebody can call my name ha. I'm not in this ha, so I can have a platform ha. But I'm in this ha, because I made a vow to God. Ha. Oh, for she to say, ha, I made a vow ha, to the Lord, ha, and I won't take it back. Ha. Somebody say, yeah. Ha. 
Bible says it just like this. Uh, the Bible said that when they were coming out of Egypt, uh, the Bible said that they were not falling apart. Uh, see, your problem is uh, you think you're going to come out of this uh, and you ain't going to get some time to enjoy it. Uh, but the devil be damned. Uh, you think you're going to come out of this uh, and your health going to be failing. Uh, you trying to watch everybody else's life. Uh, you looking at Lottie, uh, Dottie, uh, and everybody. Uh, you think because Dottie got there uh, before you. You, that you ain't on the way. I got a confession to make. When I graduated from college, my GPA was only a 2 five. When I graduated from Morehouse, my GPA was only a 2.5. But the truth of the matter was, the boy that graduated Valley Victorian, he was a graduate. The boy that graduated Salutatorian, he was a graduate. The boy that graduated Thank You Lord, he was a graduate. I graduated with a 2.5. But I, 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 I was a graduate. It don't matter who get there first. I'm coming out and I'm coming with something. I'm coming out and I'm coming out with more. I'm coming out and I'm going to have more joy. I'm coming out and I'm going to smile more. Somebody see it. I got one more. I got one more. Bible huh. declares just like this. Huh. He said, "Those who suffer." Huh. He said, "Those who suffer." Huh. He said, "If you're suffering tears, huh. you're gonna reap in joy." Huh. I'm glad huh. that the Bible declares huh. weeping huh. endure for night, huh. but joy huh. is gonna come in the morning. Huh. I may be crying now, huh. but any day now, huh. He's gonna make me smile. Huh. God. people like Pastor Beckett and stuff like that so I can make it in. <laughs> Our generation ain't got it like them. So I don't agree with all their theology but I don't know people saved in real life. Something happened to me, come get Pastor Beckett, okay? <laughs> don't pull apart on me, give us some oil and let her do whatever she's gonna do around my bed. <laughs> but come get them people that saved for real, okay? That was a season in our lives, leaders, hear me. I only been pastoring for eight years, but I can tell you a thing or two. There was a season in our life where we could connect the dots. We can make sense of stuff. And we can make it work from behind the scenes. Yeah. Come on, control freak. <laughs> Not all the people left your church because you they was wrong. Some of that you was in control. And people told you you're not gonna control me. I just lost you. I'm alright. <laughs> Proof of the matter is, these seasons we cannot control. When I was growing up, we had what would you call a testimony service given unto the Spirit of Love Christ, who was the head of my life. I thank and I praise God for being saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And you was going to testify in there. I can't hear nobody. And y'all, pastors, saints, overseers, whoever, body, body, and everybody. There was a time when we used to talk about what would have happened to the saints. Yes. We used to talk about what could have happened to the saints, and now it's happening to the saints. I, I can't recall growing up and nobody had cancer. I can't recall growing up and they was talking about evictions and people getting put out and stuff. And now the saints are going through more than they ever have before. The declaration used to be at our churches. The pastor would get up and Pastor Chief, what she said was law to us. The pastors would get up and would say, I rebuke the devil and nothing of this stuff ain't going to happen to us. And it seemed like it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Now the pastors are in a place 
having to accept the fact that people ain't saints like the, like the saints of old. If you're going to be a ministry in this last, as Pastor Simmons was saying this last Elizabethan hour, if you're going to be built ministry in this hour, you're going to have to have tough skin. Because people do whatever they want to do. I ain't been pastoring for 30 years like some of y'all, but I got my eight, and I know what I'm talking about. Lord, the budget ain't the same. And I'm not going in my pocket another day. If, there, if we don't meet budget today, we'll just close the basket down because I can't keep doing it. I went through seasons of my water being cut off. Three months. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. It's all right. Three months. My water was off because I wanted the church to be taken care of. And I'm crying and going to Planet Fitness to take a shower. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Never, never let your troubles get you down. If your troubles get you down, hold your head up high and say, Hallelujah. Anyhow. I'm preaching to people and, and preaching them into wholeness. And my life falling apart. Come on. One of the things that I'm, I'm, I endorse covering. I've had the same covering for 10 years. Susie E. Jones. I've been under the same lady for 10 years. I ain't never wavered. I ain't never strayed. Um, I'm sure she would tell you she wanted to shoot me a couple of times. But that's another story for another day. <laughs> but I'm convinced that there are some lessons that God will tell the teacher to stand away so you get the lesson. So I'm out there like, Lord, what I was going to do? Because I don't know what to do. Seasons don't make no sense. I was telling a young man in my church, I said, boy, you better get a job and you better keep a job. I said, because in one season you can be in demand for preaching and another season nobody will be calling for you. And I said, and, and when I pray, I'm done. I pray for the generals of the faith, those people who've been in it a long time. I said, God, don't let them feel and, and outdated, irrelevant and not needed. Because ministry has to look a certain kind of way for people to be attracted to. Yeah. If it ain't flashing, if the lights behind you ain't flashing, if it ain't 90 minutes of worship, if you ain't got the dance and going along with the praise team, your church might not be what people are looking for. And I'm out here at the word of the Lord. Did I say anything tonight? Yeah. I want to pray. I want to pray for the people of God. One, you, that you are valuable and you are needed. I don't care who comes on the scene. God doesn't have all timers. He doesn't have dementia. He called you for such a time as this. One of the things that God had to heal me from is talking about who left. I took that thing personal, boy. I paid people's rent. And they slandered me on Facebook. I, 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 I talked people off a cliff. And they walked by me in the Piccadilly's and act like they didn't even know me. And, and, and I told somebody this because I wanted to fight them. I can't hear nobody. I wanted to fight them. Oh, yes, I did. Be real, Pastor. I wanted to. Oh, I am. I don't know how to be no other way. I got my own to pick. And I'm sure Pastor Becker will invite me back. She'll invite me back. I'm going to invite her to my church. I got my own to pick. somebody coming. I wanted to fight them. Because I said, let me tell you something. I said, you take breaks off from church because you got your feelings hurt. I said, my water was off. And I got up here. And I preached every week. I had a dude in the church. I had a dude in the church. Oh, I hope you watch him. Don't scare the people. I ain't. Pastor will make you body body. That's why God gave me my wife. I can't hear nobody. She be like, John. John. Remember who you are. <laughs> this boy rattled, rattled up this the, the rebellion in my church. And um, I know God sent me here to talk to leaders. 
I said today in class, I said, God, what am I going to talk about? And he said, you won't come out this empty handed. Yeah. I, I, for days, I was like, what am I going to talk about? Nothing. Today, I got it. Yeah. This boy wrapped up this rebellion in my church. I had a licensure service. You don't know what that is. I licensed some people. Got the blessings from my leader. I licensed some people. I ordained some people. The next day after the licensure service, 21 of them gave me a joint resolution letter. Now, that, that sounds real calm to you. But 21 people at the same time being in your church, you don't even know what direction to go in. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to do it. You don't know what to do. And you're emotional the whole time. And the longer you're depressed, the people are depressed. Y'all, I rolled a new life and I cried the whole time. Over there, I had just finished preaching Bible study. And I'm not that son that go to her for everything. I'm a big boy. I can handle some stuff. I went around there. She had just finished Bible study. And she looked at me and she said, what's wrong? I said, all is well. I said, I just come and chat with you. She said, what's wrong? I said, all is well. Before I knew that, I bust out and started crying. What she said to me changed my whole life. She said, it's not about who left. It's about who stayed. I said, how am I going to get through this? She said, you're going to get up. And you're going to tell the people. Full remarks. I preached when I was embarrassed. I'm not that old, y'all. I got a testimony. I know you won't come out in the hand. I went to the church with holes in my shoes. Y'all see part of shoes on my feet now. But I had shows of holes in my shoes. Why are you saying this? Because it need to be saved. I had holes in my shoes. And I took my shoes. I ain't lying to y'all. I took my shoes off. So nobody would see the holes in my shoes. And I preached people into holes. And one of the things that I know based on my ice season that God is faithful to his word. Yeah. God yes, is. is faithful to his word. Yes, he is. Without my permission and no sign outside, a prophet came from Maryland and I did not believe him. I'm going to tell y'all straight up, I did not believe that man. He said God is about to triple this church and spoken all these tongues and stuff. And in my head, I was saying, oh, yeah, right. Uh -huh. We ain't had no sign outside. I didn't even think the church was in a place where it could handle that. Without a sign outside, 17 people came and joined the church. Wow. And one service. I said, how y'all find the church? They said we was in a music store, Wade in Riverdale. And somebody said they hear y'all noise on Sunday morning. Oh, oh, wow. You might want to join this church. A whole family had moved from South Carolina and they was looking for our kind of worship. And Easter Sunday, 17 people joined the church. Oh, I wasn't excited, y'all. And I was excited about that last group and they devastated me. God took me through seasons where he had to heal me and not bleed on the people. If you bleed on who didn't hurt you, you're going to hurt who didn't cause you to be. Today, Pastor Becca, I come to talk to you. I got clear instructions before I left home. And the truth of the matter, everything has been going crazy. Everything has been going crazy. But I know God puts people in our lives for certain reasons. This is a great work. You're doing a great work. I have watched God. I have watched God take me from seasons, from, from people who went and spit on me to put out a fire, who now call for me. And I liked my white ears up at night. I know she'd be like, boy, shit, ugh. Why you think they call me and stuff? John, because you got the good, Sean. <laughs> but I have watched God take me from seasons where I wasn't sure to now I know. 
I'm not going into too many places second guessing what God has called me to do. Yeah. Pastor Becker, please receive this word. The second, please keep playing, but the second grace.